With prolactinoma, prolactin refers to the endocrine hormone secreted by the pituitary gland, and oma refers to a tumour. So a prolactinoma is a benign tumour, or adenoma, of the pituitary gland that secretes excess prolactin. Normally, the pituitary is a pea-sized gland hanging by a stalk from the base of the brain. It sits just behind the eyes, near something called the optic chiasm, which is where the optic nerves cross. The anterior pituitary, which is the front of the pituitary gland, contains a few different types of cell, and each of them secretes a different type of hormone. One group of cells in the anterior pituitary are called the lactotrophs, and they secrete prolactin. Prolactin stimulates breast milk production. Another group of cells that are found in the anterior pituitary are gonadotrophs, and they secrete two gonadotropic hormones, luteinizing hormone, or LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, both of which stimulate the ovaries in women, which make oestrogen, and stimulate the testes in men, which makes testosterone. Prolactin release is controlled by something called the hypothalamus, which is a structure at the base of the brain just above the pituitary. It makes two key hormones, thyrotropin-releasing hormone, which increases prolactin release, and dopamine, which inhibits prolactin release, and actually overrides the stimulatory effect of thyrotropin-releasing hormone. That's why dopamine is known as prolactin inhibiting factor, and it's constantly released to prevent prolactin release in anyone that's not pregnant. High levels of prolactin in the blood sends a negative feedback signal to the hypothalamus, making it release more dopamine, which then decreases prolactin levels. High levels of prolactin can also signal the hypothalamus to decrease the secretion of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone acts on the anterior pituitary to make follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, or FSH and LH. Now, during pregnancy, the anterior pituitary gland releases prolactin and the placenta releases human placental lactogen and progesterone. And all three of these hormones stimulate the growth of more glandular tissue in the breast to produce milk. Prolactinomas are functional tumours, meaning that they secrete high levels of prolactin and they typically form when there's a mutation in the lactotroph cells of the anterior pituitary that allows the cells to divide uncontrollably. The key is in the size with these things. Prolactinomas that are less than 10 mm in diameter are considered microprolactinomas, whereas those that are greater than 10 mm are called macroprolactinomas. Now, macroprolactinomas can compress surrounding structures, like the meninges, which is the protective layer overlaying the brain that typically causes pain when it's stretched. Also, an enlarged pituitary gland can compress the optic nerves as they cross at the optic chiasm. This can cause vision problems, as it affects a person's ability to view things that are in the temporal, or outermost portion, of the visual fields in both eyes. And this is called bitemporal hemianopia. Another name for this is tunnel vision, because the centre of your vision is clear, but everything in the periphery is dark. Kind of like looking through a tunnel, I suppose. As well as all the local effects... The prolactin that gets secreted by the pituitary inhibits the hypothalamus from releasing gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which leads to a decrease in follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from the pituitary. Now this is an issue because it results in less oestrogen being produced in the ovaries, and less testosterone in the testes. Low levels of these sex hormones can cause inhibition of ovulation in women and inhibition of spermatogenesis in men. In women, Oestrogen is also really important because it prevents the activation and differentiation of certain bone cells called osteoclasts. Osteoclasts normally break down bones and release the calcium into the blood. So, with decreased oestrogen levels, osteoclasts are free to proliferate, and therefore, women with prolactinomas are at increased risk of fractures and osteoporosis. So, when it comes to symptoms... People with small prolactinomas or microprolactinomas often have no symptoms at all, whereas those with large prolactinomas, macroprolactinomas, might have vision problems like bitemporal hemianopia or headaches where the meninges is stretched. In women, excess prolactin causes galacteria, which is milky nipple discharge, amenorrhea, which is missed menses, 
and vaginal dryness and brittle bones in old age. In men, excess prolactin causes gynecomastia, or breast enlargement, and erectile dysfunction. And both sexes can experience decreased libido in infertility. The diagnosis of prolactinoma is typically based on elevated levels of prolactin in the blood. Sometimes there's also excess thyrotropin-releasing hormone, which may be stimulating the pituitary gland to secrete prolactin. Often, an MRI can be done to visualise the prolactinoma and classify it based on size. To treat prolactinomas, you can use medication or chop it out surgically. Since dopamine inhibits prolactin release, a clever way to treat it medically is with dopamine agonists like bromocryptine and cabagoline, which can be used to inhibit prolactin release. Now, surgery is usually only considered for individuals with macroprolactinomas, or those who fail medical therapy. If complete resection of the prolactinoma is not possible, or if prolactin levels remain elevated after surgery, radiation therapy can sometimes be useful. Okay, we made it, that's it. So let's just quickly whiz over the main points. Prolactinomas are benign tumours of the anterior pituitary that result in the excess secretion of prolactin. Excess prolactin can cause a wide range of symptoms, including galactorrhea, which is a milky discharge from the nipples, gynecomastia, which is breast tissue growth in men, amenorrhea, or missed menstrual periods, and infertility. It's typically treated either with dopamine agonists or with surgery. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.